The flow conditions look lovely. What about what? Look really good. Okay, so today we are down on the Foy catchment in Cornwall, and what we're aiming to do is deploy some devices to monitor acid herbicides flushing through the system. And what we're going to use is a, a device called a chem catcher, and we'll talk through the chem catcher in a little bit more detail in just a second. The reason why we're doing this, um, traditionally you take a water sample, a spot sample using a bottle, dip it in the water and then take that water away to the laboratory but that only gives you a snapshot of what's happening in the system at that time. So what we need to do is deploy some kit for a longer time period that has the ability to absorb and monitor passively uh, the acid herbicide concentrations in the river. The chem catchers were designed by the University of Portsmouth. The application of them in this way for monitoring water quality and specifically acid herbicides was developed by Southwest Water. Acid herbicides are very mobile and they move through the system very quickly at the onset of rainfall. So by taking a, a water sample at one particular time, you might actually miss the peak concentration of herbicides flushing through the system. We're putting out six uh, samplers on the Foy catchment. We've previously deployed uh, 10 on the Tamar catchment. And what we aim to do is put a range of these in strategic points to allow us to identify any hot spots of herbicide uh, contamination in the catchment. Once we've identified those hot spots, we can then focus our monitoring um, within certain subcatchments in more detail to really try to pin down and identify the key sources. And once we've identified those sources, we can then target those areas for mitigation practice. So what we're aiming to do, and certainly what Southwest Water would like to do, is target the contaminants at source. Let's try to prevent the contaminants entering the watercourse in the first place so that the raw water quality is actually improved before it gets to the water treatment plant. And the aim of that is to reduce the overall pressure and the costs of treatment. Potentially reducing the costs of treatment could benefit the consumer in the long term, but there are also obviously wider benefits to the natural environment, to the freshwater ecosystem, the function of those ecosystems and the services they provide. So we're going to show you now how to deploy um, one of these chem catchers uh, alongside uh, Martin and Ian from Southwest Water. Okay, so this is an example of a chem catcher. Um, so inside this is uh, a membrane which Ian, as an organic chemist, will be able to explain how it works much better than me. But essentially this membrane is able to absorb acid herbicides from the water column. This is what's known as a field blank. So this isn't actually going to be immersed in the water. At each site, before we deploy the kit in the water, we always open up that field blank, and that's basically just to check that we're not getting any con uh, contamination from the procedure itself. So that's, that's really just a, a, a check. This is what's actually gonna be immersed in the water. So at each site, we've got three chem catchers mounted to a plate. We always try to put three on and do things in triplicate if we can. And what I need to do is just take off these transport caps and expose the membranes before putting it into the water. So that's one done. Nice and tight as well. Give all of those a check. Okay, now I'm ready to put these into that protective cage. So you'll notice that this, this allows the water to, to flow through it. And if I pop that one in there now, I can tip this upside down now. We'll lose some water, but that's fine. It's going to be immersed in the river in a second anyway. We've got each of these labelled one to three and then there's a site code in front of them just so that we know when they're sent to the lab exactly what site those are from. Okay so that's the blank sealed and then we'll pop that back in the bag and that will 
we'll take that to the next site. Now it's just a case of putting the lid on the chem catcher cage. So it just should. It's a bit fiddly, but it should just slide on. There we go. Great. So that's the, the chem catchers now protected inside this cage. <clears throat> this is weighted um, so that it will sit nicely on the on the channel bed and it won't drift away. Um, we're also going to secure this chain to this point as well and then secure the chain um, to an area on the channel bank so that if the flow does increase then we're not going to lose uh, the whole system. This is the tummy. Calibration. How do, you, how do you go about calibration? Well, when you calibrate, base basically for a given receiving phase, so we were saying in this case we're using an anion exchange disc, uh, the uptake rate of a given compound into that receiving phase is specific to that compound. And even if you're talking about quite closely related at molecules. So if you're talking about acid herbicides, say something like Mecoprop and MCPA, two very closely related compounds, but just because of their chemistry being a bit different, their uptake rate will vary. If you want to uh, obtain semi-quantitative data from using passive samplers, in other words, be able to uh, work out what is a time-weighted average concentration for the two weeks I've had this device in the river, you need to know something called the sampling rate. And to obtain the sampling rate, you need to do a, an in-lab calibration. And what that involves is taking a representative matrix, so we used River X raw water, which would be fairly similar, say, to the FOI, putting in a tank, and in that tank you have a stirred a rotating carousel with multiple chem catchers loaded onto it. You rotate the carousel at a rate which you think might give a velocity of flow over the surface of the samplers, roughly equivalent to what you typically see in the river. You spike the um, water with a known concentration of the pollutants of interest and then over a period of time you remove chem catchers and measure the mass of each pollutant that's accumulated on the chem catcher and that lets you get a plot of uh, mass on the disc, receiving disc, against time of deployment uh, and from the re resultant plot uh, you get a plot that looks a little bit like a bacterial growth curve and on the linear part of the plot uh, if you measure that gradient mm -hmm. that tells you the sampling rate. When you know the sampling rate then it's a simple matter to uh, work at time weighted average concentration is a simple equation that just says uh, the uh, average concentration in the water is the mass on the disc divided by the sampling rate multiplied by the time you've deployed the sampler which and that's typically in a say a fortnight in this case uh, how long you can deploy a sampler is going to vary according to the type of receiving phase you're using and the type of compounds you're looking for so it might only be a matter of days, in some cases it might be uh, a month. It depends on the capacity of the receiving disc and the rate at which the compound's taken up. But that's basically what calibration's about. It's about establishing what is the, really the uptake rate of the compound of interest, or in this case, the compounds of interest. We did that for nine different compounds in, in a composite mix. And can you tell me what, what compounds you can look at look for so far? Okay, in this method that you're using here, acid herbicides, we can look for nine different acid herbicides. Can I remember all of them off the top of my aging, balding head? <laughs> I'll see if I can. They are uh, Mecoprop, MCPA, Dichloprop, 2,4-D, Bentazone, Clopyrrolid, Fluoroxypia, Triclopia, and... MCPB and amongst those nine are the most heavily used acid herbicides in the southwest of England and really in nationally 
So things such as mecoprop and MCPA, very widely used to control broadleaf weeds in grassland. Uh, you know, so intensive silage production, you'd be using those. And then compounds like uh, triclopyra, fluoroxypyra, clopyrrolid, they're used to control the more like pernicious weeds like uh, docks, thistles, things like that. Uh, also in grassland, but they can be used in other connections. And, and then the other compounds you find a bit more sporadically, they've got, you know, slightly different uses. Mm -hmm. But those five are the main ones that we would detect. Uh, what we've also done is worked on a method for metaldehyde, which mm -hmm. is a highly topical slug killer, as you're probably aware. Mm -hmm. That uses a completely different sort of receiving disc. So the disc is much thicker. The type of chem catcher we used was a modified design to take the thicker disc. Uh, and uh, the whole uptake mechanism is completely different. It's not by forming an iron pair, it's by uh, different sorts of interaction on the disc. So those are the two things we've worked on so far. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's important to, to fasten this to something on the riverbank, um, either directly to the bridge if it's possible, or to a tree branch or a secure tree root. Uh, in this case, we've got this nice fence post, so that'll do the job to stop everything from floating away should the discharge, river discharge increase. Wrap that around a couple of times. And then just fasten it back using the shackle. And so that's that's Ian and Martin just taking a water sample um, to, to measure the, the pH and the temperature of the water. And then in just a second, as I mentioned, they'll do the uh, velocity using a really high-tech method known as poo sticks. Okay. What we're looking for is, we're looking for a bit, a bit of depth in the river. Obviously, if the river level drops, we don't want this to, to dry out. So we're looking for a deeper point of the river where we haven't got a lot of turbulence. So this area over here, for example, wouldn't be suitable because it's quite shallow and it's very riffly. But here, um, just by the bridge, we've got a nice bit of depth and a nice um, smooth sort of uniform flow, if you like, running through. Um, and also we'll, we'll try to conceal the cage as much as possible. We might even move it out and try and put it um, a bit more under the bridge if we can. So I'll, I'll move out into the channel and I'll let um, Martin and Ian uh, direct me once they've stopped playing poo sticks probably. Yes. Do you want me to take it back a little bit further underneath the bridge or? Yeah that's looking pretty good back, there. About yeah. right? Yeah. Okay and that'll sit nicely because it's got that quite heavy heavily weighted base so that'll sit nicely on the on the channel bed. Okay, here's an underwater shot. Hopefully. Yeah, 